Interested in investing in the S&P 500, but don't know where to start or just need some more information? Today, I'll be talking about how to invest in S&P 500 ETFs as a Canadian, just breaking down which tickers are available, which currency to use, and which accounts to use when investing. This is a rehash of an older video I made over a year ago. I'm hoping to spruce it up with more relevant information. And considering people still had hundreds of questions, I'm going to try to answer those additional questions here. If you're interested in building an ETF portfolio, check out these three videos where I recommend where I would invest $1,000, $5,000, and $10,000. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you notice my eyes moving, I just got a teleprompter, which I'm trying out for the first time, just to ease the ease the editing and filming process. Usually I ramble on too long, so if I have a script, hopefully I can make a short and concise video. A quick intro, the S&P 500 is an index fund with the largest 500 companies in the US. It has done historically well both in terms of capital appreciation and dividends. The issue is, if you're not in the US, you'll have to invest in US dollars, which exposes you to currency risk, which you may or may not be willing to take. Also, withholding taxes on your dividends, which may hurt your rate of return, especially if you're investing in a tax-free or tax-deferred vehicle like TFSA, RSP, or RESP. I'll be breaking down a few different scenarios and alternative for each. If you want to know a cheap way to convert CAD to USD, please watch my video on the Norbert's Gambit Maneuver. There are three good S&P ETFs on the New York Stock Exchange, not in any particular order. Ticker VU, which is the best in my opinion, ticker IVV, and ticker SPY, which is probably the most famous. These are in US dollars, so if you have USD or don't mind converting, I would recommend VU. It has the lowest expense ratio, simply meaning the company managing the fund is charging you the least out of the three I mentioned. Now, for Canadians on the TSX, there are four good ones to look at. VFV, VSP, XSP, and ZSP. These are all in Canadian dollars, but this is where it gets complicated. Which one to choose, which currency to use, and which account to purchase them in. VSP and XSP are both currency hedged. This confused people in last year's video, so I'll try to explain it better here. Currency hedged means they have systems in place so your investment doesn't get infected by fluctuations in the US dollar or the Canadian dollar. Your investment only depends on the performance of the fund, which is the S&P. Remember, these ETFs are investing in 500 US companies, but if you're in Canada, you need to convert your CAD into USD. These Canadian ETFs do it for you, and your investment in these US stocks won't tank if the US dollar tanks. On the flip side, it won't go up if the US dollar goes up as well. So this is good in my mind since you're not exposed to another risk, but it could be bad. What if the US dollar shoots up 30%? You're missing out on that currency gain. But like the other way, you're also missing out on currency loss as well. Between these two hedged ETFs, if I were to choose one, I would go with VSP, just do the lower management expense ratio. Going forward, if I talk about a hedged ETF, I'll only be referring to VSP. The other two, VFV and ZSP, are similar. These are non-hedged, so you're at risk of both the ETF and the currency. So if the ETF goes up, but the foreign exchange goes down, it could wipe out your gains. But if we present the other side, the ETF could drop, but then the foreign exchange could go in your favor, eliminating your losses. It's all a risk we take. Looking at both these ETFs, if we were to hold for years and years, if not decades, the expense ratio would play a bigger factor, so I would choose VFV just based on expense ratio. Other than that, they're very similar. If I were to choose a non-hedged ETF, I would go VFV. Not taking anything else into account, if I were asked which of the four would I choose, which is the best ETF, my personal opinion is VSP. I would say because it's currency hedged, it's not based on the increase or decrease of the US dollar. It's only based on the performance of the underlying security, which is the S&P 500. So you only have one thing to track, one thing to worry about. Here's where we get more confusing, withholding taxes. When Canadians get dividends from US companies, they're usually subject to a withholding tax of 15% of only the dividend, unless you hold this ETF or the stock in the correct account. Keep in mind, Canada and US thankfully have tax treaties in place where Canadians can get some relief when investing in US stocks. But what does this mean? If you're holding a US ETF that pays dividends in your RRSP or RRIF, I'll just call it RIF, they do not have a 15% withholding tax. In our tax treaty, because the RSPs are registered and they're retirement accounts, the US doesn't take the 15% from us. It's a little benefit we get. This means VU, SPY, or IVV should be held in an RSP because of this benefit. 
Here's another thing to keep in mind. I mentioned RSP and RIF. This doesn't take into account TFSA or RESP. There are no treaties for those accounts. They're not retirement accounts. You still will be charged a withholding tax. This is important stuff to keep in mind. Paying withholding tax in your TFSA kind of eliminates the whole purpose of a tax-free savings account. Let's get even more confusing. If you purchase a Canadian listed ETF that holds US listed stocks or ETFs like VSP, VFV, ZSP, or XSP, any of the ones I mentioned, in any of these accounts, RSP, TFSA, or RESP, there is no tax savings or tax haven. You will be indirectly hit with withholding tax. You won't be directly paying tax, but the ETF is paying the 15% withholding tax. So your returns will always have a tax drag. I'll repeat this one more time. If you have a Canadian ETF that owns US dividend paying stocks, there will be a slight tax drag on your returns because those US dividends will be subject to a 15% withholding tax. Note, I'm only saying tax on the dividends, your capital appreciation is still sheltered. I'll try to break it down as simply as I can. If you're currently investing in an RSP, I would recommend VU. This means you'll have to buy in US dollars. So there's a little foreign exchange conversion there, but you won't have to be subject to withholding tax. Unless you have no choice, I would not purchase one of the Canadian ETFs in here in your RSP due to the taxes that would be charged and lost forever. If you're currently investing in a TFSA, I would recommend a Canadian ETF VSP because of the currency hedge, low management fee, and it's purchased in Canadian dollars so you don't need to convert anything. That's all for this video. I hope it was clear. Um, I'm trying to rehash a few older videos, hopefully trying to answer some more questions. Let me know if it was too annoying or too distracting with me constantly pausing and stopping and reading off the teleprompter. I'm gonna try this out. If it doesn't work, I'll probably toss it and going back to memorizing my script on the side and then saying it in front of you. Let me know if you even notice the teleprompter because right now it's right in front of the screen. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. Let me know if you have any questions, if anything was unclear and tune into the next one.